Okay, so we have that septic patient that had these vital signs, and we're trying to choose what vasopressor we should use. Let's talk about it. Okay, so here are your vital signs again, just so you can get a quick look. You can pause this to make sure that you've got an idea. But our patient is in a decompensated state of septic shock. We've given fluids, they're still hypotensive, and so we're choosing between using norepinephrine and epinephrine. And so in septic shock, the strong choice is going to be norepinephrine here, as opposed to epi. Now, why is that? Well, it's actually because of the heart rate itself. So we know that in septic shock, we already have an elevated heart rate in order to compensate for the decreasing mean arterial pressure. Okay, so if we give epinephrine and we improve, we, we will improve the stroke volume, we will improve the systemic vascular resistance, but we also will increase the heart rate. And that might not be a terrible thing at first, but as we increase the heart rate, we're actually going to decrease cardiac output. How does that work? Well, the more and more heart rate we have, the less and less time we have between beats to fill these ventricles with blood. And so if we decrease that fill time to the point where we're not able to completely or adequately fill this heart full of blood, well, that's ultimately going to decrease the cardiac output, ultimately decreasing the amount of circulating blood and mean arterial pressure. So that's why norepinephrine is a stronger choice in this particular case, because it's going to improve our systemic vascular resistance. It's going to cause vessel squeeze, which is part of the pathophysiology of sepsis, which is also going to improve the blood pressure, but it's going to leave the heart rate alone, meaning that we're not going to increase it by, and then decrease fill time ultimately decreasing cardiac output. So norepinephrine is a strong choice inside sepsis, whereas epi has some negatives that could impact this patient.